committed suicide. So they're going to say she was sexually active. Uh, she uh, came down with a sexually transmitted disease, got depressed over it, and killed herself. So that was bad enough. When they sent me pictures, me black and white pictures of the crime scene and at the autopsy center, so they were obviously trying to hide the blood uh, splash patterns and all this other stuff that goes with a homicide. But I launched a preliminary investigation. I called some people and asked them if they knew somebody in, that was in Iraq to let me know what they could they could tell me. I had a friend of mine who was a police officer. He got a message that she was found dead shot in the head in a contractor's tent. He was on his way. Oh, he called me. He was on his way over here. He never made it. He had a heart attack. But his wife told me what his message was. The second message that we got was that a female sergeant found her body in a, that was located close to a jogging area. I think that, no, they said the cafeteria, that's what they said. The third one was that she was found dead in a tent that was off limits to military personnel. So here's what I ended up explaining to a um, uh, investigator that I met in Lacey Clay's office, and I'm, I'm thinking the date was like the the 19th of July, and I think it was in 2007. Uh, Lacey Clay allowed me to use his his office, and five people came to that meeting. Ed Reedy was the medical examiner who said. Uh, this was well. He said, according to the information he received, it was a, a suicide. He never said it was a homicide. He said the criminal investigator said it. Uh, we had a special agent Hughes. Now, I don't know if people remember the movie The General's Daughter. Do you remember that movie? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That was with. Yeah. Is that the the Pat Tillman story? No, that Pat Tillman is the different scenario. This okay. was a move where a general's daughter was found dead, uh, and they sent a special process, a special investigator. John Travolta was that person, by the way, to Iraq to investigate uh, the the uh, this, the general daughter's. Uh, General's daughter. Yeah, the I Army remember. did. Yeah, okay. I got pe several people sent me that tape. But anyway, welcome to the King Yah podcast. As you may have guessed, I am your host, King Yah, a father, activist, and professional speaker. On this podcast, we discuss relationships, criminal justice, news and politics, Black history, culture and domestic violence awareness. If this is your first time being here, I want to say thank you and encourage you to keep listening. Each week you can expect to hear thought-provoking interviews as well as personal relationship tips that would help enhance your life. You will have access to resourceful downloads that you can implement daily to become more productive. Thank you for spending some time with me today. Follow me on Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter, KingYa2020. My podcasts are also available on iHeartRadio, Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, Anchor, TuneIn, or wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Just look for King Yah. The purpose of this podcast is because everyday people inspire me through their stories of trial and error in life. Now let's jump into your favorite podcast. What better way to share our stories? All right, so for our listeners that are just now tuning in, again, we want to thank you. Uh, we've got listeners all over the world listening today to uh, today's show. We appreciate uh, we appreciate you, your support, 
and we appreciate the strength, tenacity, and the resilience of our brother, Dr. John Johnson, who is sharing the uh, the story of his daughter, Lavina Lynn Johnson, who was, uh, again, uh, uh, her story, The Silent Truth, Unsolved Mysteries of Lavina Johnson. Welcome to the King Yah Podcast. As you may have guessed, I am your host, King Yah, a father, activist, and professional speaker. On this podcast, we discuss relationships, criminal justice, news and politics, black history, culture, and domestic violence awareness. If this is your first time being here, I want to say thank you and encourage you to keep listening. Each week, you can expect to hear thought-provoking interviews, as well as personal relationship tips that would help enhance your life. You will have access to resourceful downloads that you can implement daily to become more productive. Thank you for spending some time with me today. Follow me on Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter, KingYa2020. My podcasts are also available on iHeartRadio, Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, Anchor, Tune in or wherever you get your favorite podcast. Just look for King Yah. The purpose of this podcast is because everyday people inspire me through their stories of trial and error in life. Now let's jump into your favorite podcast. What better way to share our stories? Silent Truth Unsolved Mysteries of Lavina Johnson. The Silent Truth and Unsolved Mysteries of the Rape and Murder of Private First Class Lavina Lynn Johnson. United States Army Private First Class Lavina Lynn Johnson was murdered, raped, tortured, and ruled a suicide. This story has attracted international attention. She is one of many victims in the Army, in the military, that has been raped, murdered, officially covered up, and ruled a suicide. The family of these victims should be celebrating life and the bereaved families justice for these tragedies as you are tuning into our show you're going to be listening to Lavina Johnson's father Dr. John Johnson he will give an account he will be giving an account on what really happened to his daughter and their last interactions with Lavina interestingly enough five years ago I had the honor of interviewing Dr. John Johnson and covering the story for the very first time of Lavina Lynn Johnson, his daughter, on Human Rights Radio here on the Blog Talk Radio channel five years ago. And so now I have another opportunity to interview him again. So much has changed since five years ago. His family, They have still not received justice for the murder, rape, and torture of their beloved daughter. If this is your first time being here, I want to say thank you, and I encourage you to keep listening. You can follow us wherever you stream your favorite podcast, YouTube, email your story to, you can email your story to us, uh, kenya2020 at pm.me. We'd love to hear your stories if you have similar stories or you want to be a guest on our show. Uh, so with no further ado, we are going to be going to the phone lines in just a few moments. Um, we'll be bringing Dr. John Johnson on. It's a two-hour show, so you guys are in for uh, a powerful, powerful story. Um, it's, uh, it's a heart-wrenching story. Uh, every single day the family is forced to relive this this moment over and over again of an unsolved mystery and silent truth of their daughter, Lavina Lynn Johnson. So we'll be getting into it. Uh, the phone lines, I'll, I'll, I will also open the phone lines up for you guys as well to ask questions. So we will do some intermissions, uh, and you guys will have an opportunity to ask some questions uh, as well. Uh, With no further ado, we're going to bring on 
Dr. Johnson. All right. Dr. Johnson, are you with us? I am, and thank you. Hey, Dr. Johnson, thank you. It's a pleasure, my brother. Uh, I'm, I'm unfortunately under these circumstances. However, um, it's a pleasure to, to hear your voice, sir, and uh, to be hearing this, this story again. Um, where do you want to start, my friend? Where would you like well, to start? Yeah, well, technically, our story started at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. When Lavina got there, that's when she was told she was headed to Iraq after being guaranteed by her recruiter that she wouldn't wouldn't have to go. But what happened after she got there, she found out she was going to Iraq. And uh, they were she and I think it was eight women. It was it was a even number. Either it was six or eight. And um they were supposed to have gotten eight days leave, according to what Lavina told me on the phone, which was the 17th of July in 2005. That was a Sunday Sunday morning. Apparently, somebody messed up the paperwork, and they only got four days. One of the white parents, from what I understand from Lavina, went to her congressman and raised hell about the fact her daughter didn't know she was going to Iraq till she got to Fort Campbell and that uh, they had cut her leave date from eight days to four. The Army ended up sending that young lady to Germany, so that made Lavina an oddball. Lavina. She, she liked me in so many ways. She's very outspoken. So she went to, I don't know who, in the leadership there and told them that they were treating uh, her differently because she didn't have a battle buddy, and her battle buddy was sent to Germany. Fort Campbell requested from the Army, according to what Lavina told us, They wanted to keep her at Fort Campbell to act as part of their recruiting team. Apparently, when they told the general, and I'm going to mention his name in a moment, over in Iraq that uh, Lavina was trying to keep her at, at Fort Campbell, he insisted that she come over to Iraq. So here you have Lavina, uh, oddball, 19 years old, being sent to Iraq where they got all these different con- uh, uh, gene- genealogy of males. In addition to that, they had already had some accusations of rape and murder. Of course, I found this out after the fact. But when she got there, she was doing her job by herself. She was opening up and locking up the communications center. Uh, She was talking about how she would get off from work and run home. Whenever she went to take a shower, she made sure she looked around and didn't see anybody there. And so she went and took a shower. So I was terrified. So I talked to her on the 14th and asked her, what, what, how, how was it? Apparently, when she went to close the center, the males would leave. So she said the general came in and made them leave out of the communication center. So my question was, why the hell is a general in the communications center with EMs, you know, enlisted people, enlisted men and women. He told Lavina the reason they didn't leave because her voice was too soft. I didn't like that. So three days later, back to the 17th, I talked to my daughter, and you got the Army, first of all, guilty of gross neglect. 
you endangered her life, what the heck did you think was going to happen to 